As I mentioned last week, this week really is packed with all of the manga license announcements and I am so excited for us to dive into those today. Hello friends! Happy Monday! I hope you had a great and fantastic weekend. I tried to wait to the last minute to be able to film this video, talk about any manga licenses. The only one I couldn't do was Tokyo Pop because that panel was on Sunday. I don't even actually know if they have any upcoming licenses that they're going to be announcing, but I guess if they do, we'll talk about that maybe next week. But yes, it was great. It was, it was really good. We'll dive into that in just a moment. But I will say, if the manga license announcements, they happen and you're like, man, that one manga license I want was not there. Do not fret, friends. I grant I can't promise you that, you know, it's going to get licensed or anything, but Manga Alerts and Winter Venom 91, I think it's his username on Twitter, both of them, they do a podcast called Behind the Manga, and they actually put together like a, it's more of a tweet than a form, but they put all of the links in one giant tweet saying where you can actually contact the publisher and fill out a form or send an email saying, hey, I would like this manga to be licensed and then you can share that with them. So if you're definitely interested in that and you really want these manga publishers to know, definitely go check out this tweet that they put together. It is super helpful and I'm just like, thank you. I bookmarked it for myself and because I bookmarked it for myself, I was like, I really want to share it with everybody else because I think it really is helpful to be able to know where to go and tell them because the only one I know of that's very active, you know, is Seven Seas every month with their surveys. I have reached out to Kanacha before and actually even got a reply back. I told them I would love to see Love That's an Understatement physically published, which was not announced this past weekend, but I did tell them and they said, hey, thank you for telling us. We will keep that in consideration. And I'm like, thank you. That's all I need to know. I do need to reach out to them again, though, to be honest. Now, while it was a big thing for manga announcements, man, the big thing, I honestly think that was maybe even maybe even bigger than the manga announcements is we had two, two big news about two different animes that are coming out in 2025. One of them is the Rose of Versailles movie, which does have a PV, an official visual that you can see, look at it. I watched the trailer or promotional video, however you want to call it. It was breathtaking. It was amazing, incredible, stunning. I was really bummed after I saw the trailer. I really wish that this would have went in my shoujo event. It went up to the second round, but it didn't make it to the third, but I'm like, okay, I know my library has this. Hopefully that hasn't changed, but I know that they did have almost the entire series except for the final volume. And I'm like, I need to go read it because the trailer, truly go check it out. I'll leave a link to it right here, was incredible. I mean, it was just absolutely breathtaking and not to be outdone, okay? So we have Rose of Versailles, a movie coming out in 2025. I think it was later that day or the following day, news comes out about the 30th anniversary of Magic Knight Ray Earth getting an anime reboot, an anime reboot. I was like, whoa, I saw the promotional video for this as well. It was amazing. It was amazing. I was like, this is going to be incredible. The way they brought the world of Sephiro to life, because that was, I feel like the biggest emphasis, incredible. I was like, I am so excited. I will also link the promotional video here if you want to go check it out. We also have the official visual, which was stunning and really just captures the excitement, I feel like, or I mean, guess for me as a reader, it captured that excitement. And I'm just like, I want to know more. I also do have a review up on this channel. If you're curious about it, it was just, it was a good day. We was eating. There was another one. I didn't mention that one because I wasn't quite as excited about that. And I feel bad because Magic Night Ray Earth really has me very excited, but it was anyway, I am falling in love with you. There was a promotional trailer, promotional video that came out as well. And it looked really good. It looked really cute. It looked very faithful to what I have read of the manga. I think I've read like the first two volumes on K-Manga. So yeah, that, that looked really cute as well. But I feel like Rose of Versailles and Magic Knight Rare totally was not... I think anything that anybody saw coming like for news last week. So that was really cool. Now this is Manwa news, but I had to share this because in the latest Manwa volume of Villains Are Destined to Die, Japan had a popularity poll of best man for 2024 when it comes near to the guys in the Villains Are Destined to Die series. And Kalisto, he won with more than 50% of the votes. He was number one best man. I was like, well, as he should. Eccles comes in number two with 19%. 
And I feel a little bit of mixed feelings about that because I do know spoilers about Eccles that happen in the novel. I feel like out of all of the guys, like he scares me more than Kalisto ever did in the manual. Well, maybe except for in the very beginning, but like at this point, I'm like, Penelope, I love you, girl, but you need to stay away from Eccles. He terrifies me right now and I do not trust him at all. Number three was Reynolds, which I was sort of like, I feel like he should be number two. We don't see a lot of him. I feel like we haven't, but I've been hearing glowing things about him. I love the recent spoilers I've seen of the latest chapter in The Weird Winter. Serves him right. Sorry, guys. I am still very salty about the latest volume in involving Winter. I'm like, he should have been number four. And then Derek, number five, definitely as he should be. Like, yes. To have, what was it, like 9% of the votes? I'm like, dude, you should be happy you got any because you don't deserve any. Sorry. No hate to the fans of Derek, but I just, no. Nope and nope. I can't. He's horrible. He is horrible in my eyes. I guess moving on though <laughs> from the hate about Derek here. So I thought it'd be fun to share some news about Kaiju number eight. Volume 13 just released in Japan. And I just wanted to share this number. They said exceeding 15 million copies in Japan. The latest volume 13 of Kaiju number eight is out today. This was earlier this week. I just was like 15 million copies of, I believe it's just this volume alone, just volume 13. And I have volume 10 still on my TV are because I have been reading all the things that have been coming out from Anime Expo, trying new manhwa, trying new manga. It's been a really fun and exciting weekend. And because of that, though, I have not caught up on Kaiju number eight yet, but 15 million copies was just mind blowing to me for Kaiju number eight, volume 13. I know for multiple weeks now because of the anime, like multiple volumes have been in the top 50 best selling manga in Japan right now. And that has been really, really exciting. I know what is the spinoff that's about him that at one point was in the top 50 as well so Kaishin number eight is just getting, getting so much love and I'm like so rightfully deserved I have loved it very much looking forward to finally reading volume 10 hopefully later today after I edit this video and talking about shonen manga this isn't exactly manga but if you like calendars and you need a new calendar for 2025 which we all do Haikyuu actually does have an upcoming 2025 calendar and it comes with 15 special bonus cards I really want to get it I have it in my cart I think it's like $14 USD before shipping and I'm just like I really want it but I'm like I don't know if my family wants a Haikyuu calendar because usually our family tries to choose one for the entire family since we all use it. I'm like a Haikyuu calendar. I want a Haikyuu calendar so if you've been looking for one I believe this comes out. Oh wait I'm not sure when it comes out but I can say that it starts in October 24 like for the calendar and then it goes to December 2025. So if you are interested in that definitely check out the link down below and I will leave links down to all of this information down below in case if you want to try anything out because this next cool thing was there was a loving yamada panel that happened at anime expo it was hosted by mangamo and i don't know if anybody brought up about the covers because you know mangamo is just doing digital they're not doing anything i believe with the physical so i don't know if that was addressed hopefully it was addressed to ink lore but anyway they celebrated the fact that loving yamada now has its own official twitter global account and so to celebrate that they have two free wallpapers that we are able to download they look super cute <laughs> i love it. I was thinking of using it honestly myself. Now before we enter into the official license announcements that I was really excited about, I do want to mention that I found out recently that the Mafia Nanny that's on Webtoons, I have a few friends who really love this series. It is getting a physical edition. It's coming out next February. I think it's February 4th as well as Viral Hit, which unfortunately I don't know anything about. I did try Mafia Nanny because I told myself if it ever got a physical license, I would go check it out and I did. I I liked it. I don't think I'm going to get it physically because it was different than I expected, but man, it is a very gripping story and was very well written and very well drawn. But I'm like, I don't know if I'll come back to reread it again. So I'm just going to stick with the digital version, but it's still really exciting to know that this is getting a physical release next year. And of course, that's not the only thing. So I'm going to say I had three, oh, I had two big license announcements I was super stoked for. And then I had a third one that was like my favorite, but it wasn't technically an actual license announcement announcement. It was just announcement. So I'm going to go over my top three that I'm like, yeah. So the, the first one. So I talked about my reading wrap up video, how I tried two different manga up on manga up app. And one of those was the Otoku 
true love connection. It is getting physically released. It's gonna be coming out in February. I am so happy. Like my night was made. Honestly, out of any of the publisher announcements, Square Enix rocked it out the park. They just nailed it because not only did we get the, Ato the Otoku love connection, but on and off, we're life in balance. Hello, yes. Oh my goodness. This was so good. I spent, I didn't spend real money. I, I told myself, no, we can't do that. But I did use more of the, like their point system to buy more chapters on there because I just really, really enjoyed it. And I'm like, we are getting a physical. Like I am so incredibly stoked. That one comes out of May or in May of next year. I cannot wait. These two were my biggest wins. And I'm just like, I am overjoyed that we're getting both of these. I love both so much and I am so very happy. I am hardcore gonna be pre-ordering them. In fact, the Otoku Love Connection is already up for pre-order, but I'm waiting for it to go on sale at Books A Million, like online, and then I will do an order, but I will be getting it. These two will be mine. I'm so very excited. The other one, oh my goodness. Honestly, I'm really excited for the two licenses, okay? But I'm gonna say this announcement, this announcement was my biggest win that I had because Eyes Press finally gave us, they finally told us when the release date is for My Secretly Hot Husband, December 2024. It will be mine. It will be mine. This was my favorite read of 2023. I love this manhwa so incredibly much. Yes, I'm going to be double dipping because I bought a bunch of chapters last year to read it and I will be doing the same to read it physically. I adore this manhwa. It is so wonderful. It should only be three volumes long, so it's not a huge investment. It is amazing amazing and I was just so overjoyed like nobody was talking about us talking about this like yet press didn't even officially announce this I happened to see this because this girl here took a picture at the panel and shared it online and I'm like thank you because I have been stalking Amazon for months now for months looking for a pre-order date like give me something give me some crumbs here eyes pressed and it's coming y'all it is coming and I will not apologize for the person I will be when it is out like I'm so excited so those are my three big wins even though technically this was not a license announcement. We got this back in November. We've just been waiting ever since, but it's coming. I cannot wait. Oh my goodness. It will be amazing. So those are my three that I'm like, I'm definitely getting these. I guess technically two, but I'm getting them for sure. And very, very excited. So we'll go into what's from Kodansha. Now I will say Kodansha was not hitting things at the ballpark for me. Um, I was really disappointed to be honest. The excitement I had for all of the announcements, they were at the bottom and I feel really bad though. I am intrigued by this one shoujo one though I read further on the K-Manga app and I do feel actually a little bit iffy about getting it physically but when I had read on K-Manga I really enjoyed what I read and that is the Ayakashi Hunter's Tainted Bride. This I found is by the same creator as Kaku Ryo, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits which you guys know I absolutely loved and so that really like bumped it up on my TBR of wanting to get physically I should say but I feel a little bit nervous because it says a steamy new historical romance like now from what I've read there is no steam at at all. There's no steam. I think it was how they did it in their official press release. They said it's Noragami meets My Happy Marriage. Haven't read Noragami, but that does feel very accurate for My Happy Marriage. I mean, it has a lot of similar beats. You have the very mean sister, though unlike in My Happy Marriage, this sister in this series, she is horrible. She is, oh my goodness, she is awful. Boiled my blood in the beginning and almost dropped it because of how enraged I was at this at this girl. I think she's actually a cousin, not a sister, but she is a family member and she treats our main girl like crap. She's horrible. But yeah, I really enjoyed what I did read, like at the time, and I mentioned that on Twitter and on Instagram, that I was really excited. I had planned to pick this one up physically. I feel a little bit iffy. I feel like it's just going to depend on my budget at the time, honestly. So yes, right now I would like to because I really did enjoy what I read in the beginning. I think I would be roughly the first volume. I really enjoyed what I read of that, but I just passed that. I was like, I don't know. I need to know where it's going to go. I'm like, well, I've got to read to see where it's going to go. <laughs> and I guess similar to that of needing to read to know where it's going to go, I am very interested in checking out and reading Spacewalking with you. So there was somebody on the Shoujo Discord that mentioned how excited she was for this. Her excitement honestly sold me. And when I mentioned that I was really excited, for or interested at least in checking this out on Twitter, I had a few people say that it's a very neurodivergent kind of story. And so I'm very curious to see where this story is going to go. I feel very confident that I'm definitely going to get this one. 
I may not be as excited as I was for like the, you know, the Otoku love connection and on and off, but I do feel very, very interested in this. And apparently it was like a big hit or is it currently a big hit in Japan? And one that I thought was great news, but was sort of like, okay, wasn't that already going to be like a thing anyway? They did announce the paperback version of Magic Knight Ray Earth Part 2. And I'm like, why was it that already announced? Because if you've read Part 1, the end of it, you're going to need and want Part 2. That is still one of the best cliffhangers I've ever read to this day. So I'm like, well, that was great news. Great time in Ekodachi's part with the anime announcement and or anime reboot announcement, I should say. So I was excited for that and that for all the fans that are reading it currently for the first time, you will be thankful that they did do an announcement for it because you're going to need that second part. I had some mixed feelings here. So the first one though that I was really excited about and actually almost didn't film this video today because I was uh, binge reading chapters is Kill the Villainous. I was intrigued about this because the word villainous is in the title. I read 20 chapters of this. It was very good. It is very different than I feel like the other villainous manhwa I have read because it really challenges the question or asks the question of how far would you go if you were Izakai or reincarnated or whatever put into this body of this villainous? What would you do and would you do anything to go back home and be in your original body? It is more of a sobering read, I feel like, and I really like the main female heroine. She is very, not brutal, but she is very frank in the things that she says. And she does not sugarcoat things internally or outwardly. And I feel like she's one of the first villainous manhwa heroines I've ever read where she doesn't care about the original romantic storyline. She's like, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be in this body. I don't want to be stuck in this storyline. And I'm going to do everything I can to get back. She's like, even if I have to die, so be it. I want to go back home. I don't want to be in this character's body and have to pretend to be her anymore. So it was very different in that sense where she was like, I'm not just going to go with the story to not disrupt it. No, she's going to disrupt that plot line and she's going to find her happiness or at least hopefully because she is pretty, she is pretty miserable right now. So I feel a little bit iffy if I'm going to get this physically, not because I disliked it, but because space is a legit issue. It's starting to become a legit issue anyway. And so I'm having to be very stern on myself of what I get. And while I really have liked what I've read, I just don't know if I would reread it again physically, but I can say I would highly recommend this one. It is very different than the other villainous manhwa that I've read. My heart goes out to her and the things that she's going through and the struggle that she has. And I'm like, please, please find happiness. <laughs> I don't know what that looks like for her right now, but I honestly hope that she does. When it came to the actual Yen Press announcements, I don't know how to say this. Is it Luciole to say that? I don't know, but Luciole has a dream. Now, I don't know much about this manga, honestly. I know it's on hiatus. It only has one volume, but the reason I want it is because it's by the same creators, Mr. Villain's Day Off and My Jemima. My Jemima is published by Yen Press. Mr. Villain's Days Off is published by Square Enix. But I saw the beginning, the first chapter, thanks to my friend Lies. She shared the, like, an official link to the Japanese pages just for the first chapter. Breathtaking. Breathtaking. I'm like, I don't even need to know or understand what's being said to appreciate the beauty of this first chapter. I am very excited. I'm not one that usually jump at like sci-fi kind of stories. I don't have anything against them, but I don't know. It's not usually something I gravitate toward, but apparently it's like apocalypse sci-fi fantasy kind of story. I feel like it's like as a blend of genres, honestly. And I was super intrigued. I'm like, I want to hear more. And that's really about all I know. I know somebody, I think it's the main character. He's been asleep for like 500 years. <laughs> Things are not what they seem, I guess. So hopefully it will come off of hiatus at some point. But I am very, very curious curious about this one. That was like the only, I think, Yen Press announcement, yeah, that I was really interested in and was willing and wanting to pick up. Now for this one, Wild Dimpa definitely does have a reputation of never publishing things on time. So I don't feel like, because they mentioned somewhere they were going to publish this in spring of 2025, the first volume would be one month and the second month would be the next volume. I'm like, um, I don't know about that, but I'm like, sure, Dimpa, you keep telling us that. That's fine. But it's called Little Nuns and it's a Nuns and Ducks art book. I originally when I saw this, I was like, oh, that sounds cute, but what is this? <laughs> you know, like, what in the world? But I went and actually checked out the creator Twitter profile, and oh my goodness, their little comics are so adorable. Like, you just look at them just to be happy. It has ducks and nuns. 
that's it. And it's just like these really cute, funny shenanigans that just have both. It was very cute, very wholesome. While I don't know if I will buy it, I thought it'd be something fun to spotlight. Just simply for the fact, want to go follow the creator on Twitter and just have quick serotonin boost in your day because that's literally what happened to me earlier. I'm like, I just kept scrolling because I just kept smiling and thought everything was so cute. And I just wanted to share it because I really like ducks. <laughs> I think they're really cool. Speaking of really cool, this is my last bit of final news and it's not related to the the licenses or anything, but I have been following this modern creator for, I don't know, it feels like for a little bit before her official like debut of volume one. And the English translation of the title is Our Banari Will Be In Your Care. The reason I wanted to mention this is because I do have this manga on my physical wish list and the creator of Takane and Hana actually recommended this manga. And I'm like, hello, yes, let the manga publishers be looking at this. I know we only have one volume, but a few weeks ago, the the creator actually had the entire first chapter for free on Twitter. The main female lead, she drives a motorcycle. She is so cool. And I'm like, we need more heroines like this who drive motorcycles. Hello, sign me up. I'm here for it. Tell me more. This is honestly one of the most anticipated or at least hopeful stories. I would love to see licensed, even though it's only got one volume because it just seems like so much fun. I wanted to mention that because I feel like if a really big creator is recommending mending a manga that I'm like, hopefully it holds more sway with manga publishers. I'm like, Takara and Hana, I'm like, hello, Viz Mia, you have published Takara and Hana and Taman's B-side. And I'm like, Taman's B-side is doing really well. So hopefully this one will also do really well and we will also get it. But that is everything I have for you this week, friends. I hope that there was some intriguing and exciting news for you. If there have been any manga licenses that you were super excited for, definitely let me know. Same as anime announcements as well, because I do feel like, but we did have the Witch Hat Atelier trailer, which I didn't even mention, but that looked really amazing. So if there's any news that you're excited for, don't hesitate to let me know. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!